one more com concept that come into the thermodynamics is the properties basically property is any measurable characteristic of the substance and it can be classified as extensive property or is called as the intensive property extensive property is defined or it depends on the mass or the extent or the size of the system for example mass is the extensive property if we have a larger volume we have a larger mass if we have a smaller volume we have a smaller mass so depending upon the size of the system we can have more value of that property or we can have less value of that property such system is called as such property is called as extensive property number of times the extensive property is also is equals to the sum of individual property if we take if we uh, consider the one large section that is if we consider this large section and if we compute the mass of this part plus this part plus this part plus all parts then if the sum of masses of all these parts is equal to total mass then that property will be called as extensive property like we have this complete uh, system and we divide this into number of parts 1 2 3 4 5 like this one and if you want to find out and if you want to find out the total mass of system then the total mass of system will be equals to m1 plus m2 plus m3 likewise so if we add all the masses of the individual system then we'll get a mass of the total system similarly the volume is also called as extensive property because v1 will be equal plus v2 plus v3 plus all volume will be equal to the final volume similarly the weight is also called as extensive property because weight of part 1 plus weight of part 2 plus weight of part 3 likewise energy may be enthalpy may be internal energy may be entropy are all equals to their individual properties so such property will be called as extensive property so example of this properties are some examples are area mass weight energy volume then enthalpy then energy then heat and the internal energy the other property is called as intensive property intensive property is independent of the mass or the size or it is a mean of individual value say for example we have this large room is divided in number of compartments then the so the temperature at any point will be may vary t1 t2 t3 may vary slightly but if i have to say the temperature of the room then i will not going to add the temperature of, then we should not add the temperature t1 plus t2 plus t3 t3 plus t4 rather we will say the average temperature of the room will be equals to t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus the sample points up to tn divided by n number of data so each property here is added and then divided by the number of reading then it is called as the average property so temperature is one example then the viscosity is another example thermal conductivity is another example all this will come in the category of this one similarly the temperature pressure velocity density this all fall, falls in the category of intensive property so temperature pressure density thermal conductivity k viscosity mu velocity capital v are all falls in the category of intensive property the properties are also further sometimes classified as a specific property that is the any property divided by mass is called as specific property and is normally represented by lower case letter so all pro all specific property are intensive property say for example specific volume so specific volume is defined as the total volume divided by the mass unit is similarly the internal energy that is represented by lower case u as a specific property divided by total property is u divided by mass the unit is here joule per kg this unit is meter cube per kg likewise specific enthalpy h is equal to total enthalpy represented by upper case h divided by mass so this one is joule per kg likewise specific entropy is equal to total entropy divided by mass is joule per kg per kelvin so all these lower case letters lower case u u h s represent specific property and they become automatically intensive property upper case letters are normally used for total property the total property is normally represented by capital u as a total internal energy 
टोटल एंथलपी टोटल हीट टोटल वर्क टोटल एंट्रॉपी स्पेसिफिक प्रॉपर्टी आर नॉर्मली रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय लोअर केस लेटर लाइक यू एच क्यू डब्ल्यू एंड एस देर एग्जिस्ट रिलेशन बिटवीन स्पेसिफिक प्रॉपर्टी एंड टोटल प्रॉपर्टी द टोटल प्रॉपर्टी इज नॉर्मली गिवन बाय टोटल प्रॉपर्टी इज नॉर्मली इक्वल्स टू द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मास इन टू स्पेसिफिक प्रॉपर्टी से फॉर एग्जाम्पल टोटल इंटरनल एनर्जी यू कैन कैलकुलेट एज मास मल्टीप्लाइड बाय यू द टोटल एंथलपी यू कैन कैलकुलेट एज कैपिटल एच इज इक्वल्स टू मास इन टू टोटल यू टोटल एच सिमिलरली एंट्रॉपी यू कैन कैलकुलेट एज मास इन टू स्पेसिफिक एंट्रॉपी लाइक वाइज द वर्क यू कैन कैलकुलेट इफ यू नोट अ स्पेसिफिक वर्क देन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय एम एंड सेम इज वैलिड फॉर क्यू ऑल्सो If you want to calculate Q, then Q m multiplied by Q. If the total property is multiplied by mass flow rate with the specific property, then it will be become the rate of change of property. So, if you want to find out the rate of change of the property with respect to time, then it is given by the mass flow rate multiplied by specific property. Say, for example, Q dot. So we can write Q dot as the rate of change of heat with respect to time. Which is joule per second, or is watts, is given by mass flow rate multiplied by the specific property equals to Q. Here m dot is kg per second, and the specific property is joule per second, joule per kg. So kg kg cancel, and you will get joule per second. Similarly, you can find out rate of change of work, which is defined as dW by dt. and is same as joule per second or say sometimes watts is also called as power and is given by the product of mass multiplied by specific work that equals to w so while studying the thermodynamics be very careful about using the units if you are using a total property the unit will be equals to joules the unit of mass is always equals to kg and the unit of this quantity will be joules per kg and if you are using the rate of change of then it is always equals to joule per second or watts is always equals to m dot that is kg per second multiplied by joule per kg so that is balance unit before we start the concept of work let have some mathematical introduction about the point function and the path function that is the exact differential and inexact differential for this purpose we will consider the concept of area under a curve let consider here one system the horizontal axis represent x axis and vertical axis represent the y axis and there exist a certain function so there exist one curve here which is equal sorry let's say this value equals to x1 and this value will be equals to x2 and suppose this one is y1 and this one is y2 if you integrate dx from 1 to 2 so what we get is integral dx that will be equals to x2 minus x1 now instead of moving from 1 to 2 via this path if i move from 1 to 2 via some different function that is y1 equals to f1x but my end points are remain same so there is no need so my calculation will not change for dx it is still equals to x2 minus x1 so whether i follow the path a or whether i follow the path b my function calculation will not change similarly if i solve for dy from 1 to 2 either via path a that is via this path a or via path b this value is always remain same as equals to y2 minus y1 so when the integrand value is independent of the path followed but depends on the start state and the end state only that is depends on the end state only and not on path such functions are called as point functions and they are the exact differential and they are represented by operator t so the point functions are the exact differential so we use the operator t and they are independent of the path followed that the path is a or path is b that is y is equal to f of x or y is equal to f of x for both of them it depends only on 
it depends only on the end state and independent of totally the path followed. There are certain other functions called as path functions. Say for if I want to calculate the area, again for the same for y equals to f of x, that is y is equals to f of x. Then I have to calculate what is the area under this diagram. So this one is x1 again and this one is x2. One to two. So area under diagram can be calculated by considering one small strip. And this strip has thickness equals to dx and the height equals to y. The area of rectangle is y times dx. So the area is given by integral y dx from 1 to 2. But for this one, I have must know what is the state 1, what is the state 2 and how I am joining the state 1 and 2 that is whether I join the function with y is equal to f of x or if I join this one that is y is equal to f1x. Because if I consider y is equal to f of f1x, then my integrand value, the height will be increased. In that case, I will get different area. So we cannot say that the integral 1 to 2 y dx for other path is also same. If I say this one is path A and this one is path B, then area under 1, A, 2 will be naturally less than, will naturally different than 1, B, 2. And therefore, we have to include here one more factor that equals to a, and this is not equals to the integral 1 to 2 via path b. That is the area 1 a 2 is not equals to area under the curve 1 b 2. So, if you try to generate some third information on the xy plot, that is in this case is the area, then that third function will be called as inexact differential. So if we want to write down area then area will be written as integral del a and what it needs the information is 1 as well as 2 that is the end state and the path followed whether the path followed is a or the path followed is b. So that type of functions are called as path functions. Normally we come across two type of function in thermos. One is called as point function and other is called as path function. Normally the coordinate axis that we are using x and y and if we integrate dx and dy these are always equals to the path function. But in this x and y graph if we want to calculate the area under the graph then that will be always equals to the path function because it really matters for me how I move from 1 to 2 whether path, if I move via path A or move via path B. In all these situation area under the diagram will be different that will be called as path functions. So to define the path functions, we will say they are the inexact differential that is normally operator delta is used to represent the path function and they depends on both the path followed as well as the state 1 and the state 2 whereas the point function depends only on the state 1 and state 2 and they are independent of the path followed. So we have to write a equal to integral del a that becomes, becomes a path function. And unless we have complete information about the path followed, we are unable to calculate the integral area A.